Hey y'all, today we're going to work on breaking down, servicing, and reassembling a Shimano Spheros 6000 FA. Just going to get started with it. Yeah, it's kind of a dirty reel. Uh, we'll get that cleaned up as well. Uh, I think before I even start that part, I'm going to show you what I'm going to use along the way. So we just kind of get that out of the way. Uh, to break down grease, anything that may be stuck on inside in terms of the grease realm, then we'll use something like Corrosion X to break that down and wipe it out. Uh, I'm going to use a lot of Q-tips most likely paper towel and on occasion i may end up using some four odd steel wool which i think i will use for the bale wire any event let's get to it we're going to start with the spool first to get this handle off we're just going to unscrew it backwards just kind of want to get out of my way that's all unscrew that knob counterclockwise to get it off and i'll show you the breakdown of the drags on this To access the drags, we're going to screw those four screws on the uh, on there and under there. I believe there's more. Let me just double check it first. All these screws are going to be the same size. And it's just going to pop that up. Hitting the wrong slot. Just take your time with it. There we go. Then we have those four screws inside here that we can just remove to access the drag. I'm gonna start with this to kind of work these because they may be kind of stuck in there a little bit. And these both screws are completely different so you can certainly mix them up and not worry too much about it. But if you didn't want to do that, this one's more of like a turtle back kind of head. And this is more of a sloped head, the one for this piece. Now, of course, if you have a line on here, uh, in general, if you take this off and your line is on here, it's not going to really go anywhere. But you have to be a little bit more careful, and you may not want to do that. But this is the only way you can access the drag. Pop that out. And then we're going to just take the drags tag out, which looks pretty good. I like that. The drag tag look, looks pretty good. Uh, this we don't take off. It just kind of stays in there. We're just going to clean that up. Uh, I'm going to use a toothbrush, which I didn't mention earlier about cleaning stuff up. And add some oil and some grease to it. I'm going to dump this out in the garbage. Just while you're watching with me and do this part I use real X oil to kind of work on these things you don't need to put any grease there but you certainly can if you want to uh, but I do like to grease this uh, line keeper uh, section right here so I'll do that okay so these drags looked pretty good so there's not a whole lot I need to do to them. I'm just going to clean this stuff up. Uh, I'm going to keep them separate because I don't want to get this contaminated with all these things over here because I will clean this up. So I'll come back to you after I clean this stuff up, show you how to put it back together. I think it's fairly straightforward, but there might be some keys on here you need to see. See you guys in a bit. Now I'll show you guys a little tip here. Um, I do this all the time with bait runners because they have that, they get a lot of dirt and stuff around here. You can actually use this steel wool to um, to clean this off and not worry too much about it. It does not, if you're sparse with it, it does not remove that um, screen print that's on there. Just be a little gentle, but you can certainly work around it just like I'm doing here to clean off any residue, bait, or whatever that's on there and not worry too much about taking off this screen print that's on there, just like that still good uh, with the drags they look pretty good so there's not a whole lot I'm gonna do to them so all I'm gonna do at this point is just kind of stick them back in the greasing on this looks pretty good so I'm just gonna drop them back in and then do the rest if you saw the stack that I did I did one drag washer one keyed washer which is what this one looks like and then one drag washer, one aired washer, 
and then the final piece is this and this at this point we can take some grease and I would say be light with this since you're using a different kind of grease around the edge there then we're going to do it for the holes as well so nothing gets stuck that's kind of what we want and I'm going to do all the holes because just because because it'll take too long to figure out which ones to do and which ones not to do all right now we can take this piece uh, tip is whenever you're putting this back in that little raised piece that you see there uh, will be facing up so like this just drop that in and you're good now what we're looking for are the larger holes here so we have one there one there one there and one there just look at the larger holes and you should be fine All right, now when that's done, we're gonna take this. Notice there's four holes on the bottom of this plastic piece. We're gonna fit those four holes over these four screws. So we're gonna drop it on. This one we have trouble getting in or getting out. Rotate it until you get over those four screws and you see four holes remaining for these screws that are left over. All right, now let's go ahead and get to the rotor and the bale assembly. I'm gonna pull these washers up. Leave them right there. Now we have a set screw here that we need to remove. Now we can take this nut off and it's counterclockwise to remove it, so lefty-loosey. I just kind of stick things to kind of together uh, when I put them over. I'm just gonna rock this up. I'm gonna leave this alone for now. Now let's go ahead and remove the bale first. And this may be a little bit tricky for some of you guys. Uh, I mean, it will be for me as well. Uh, these normally get stuck or frozen in there. But you have to undo a screw right here. This one is not stuck, that's good. There's another one over here. Kind of support the bale arm when you do this one. This is where the bale spring will be. Kind of like so. I'm gonna pull this up right now, just to kind of get out of the way, because there's a lot of load there. And I'm also gonna remove these uh, two pieces here. There's a pin and there's a spring that goes inside that hole. We'll leave this alone for a sec, and then we'll jump over here. Support this so you can get the screw all the way out. There's that. That pulls off and now we can pop this piece out, which is the support for that screw, the silver screw. And then this piece. It has a little piece on the back, so just be careful that when you're pulling it out. Now we can open this up and we'll get the bail, uh, sorry, the lime roller last. So we have a screw here, which I'm just gonna loosen. One here. And I'll kind of keep those separate. I'm gonna hold on to this before I pull it out. Just hope everything stays intact so you can see it. Good. So you see we have that metal piece there. There's two washers there that support that. There's a spring, a receiver, and uh, head at the top there. So let's pull these out one by one. This will come out first because that sits on top of that that spring portion right there, kind of like that. I'll show you that in a sec. Then you pop this out. Now you can pop this black piece off. Up and pull 
this up and out. That's it for that. This one has, like I said, two washers. There's one, the white one's on top, and then there's this uh, thin metal one that's below it. And I think that's it for that. You can leave all these things to the side. The line roller, we're simply going to do this screw here. Another little washer there. Then you have your line roller. I think it only yeah. There's two pe two pieces. These are two s different widths. Uh, the thicker side will be facing the line roller. The thinner side will be facing the bail arm. You have your bushing, and I think yep. Yeah, there we go. We have a um, a ball bearing inside here. Just gonna double check that when we take it out. I see some rust, if you can see that. And it's locked up. So we need to replace that ball bearing. Notice that the ball bearing goes on first, then the bushing, and then the line roller through the rest of this section. All right, I'm gonna get the stuff cleaned up, show you how to put all the stuff back in. Okay, so I did forget to show you something, which is that spacer. That's all the way at the end or base of this uh, post. And if you look at the post, there's two little notches on the end of it. Those two little notches will be fitting in the corresponding slots on this bail arm. Uh, so you'll, if you look at yours, you'll see there's one there and one there. Uh, I'll show you how that lines up whenever you put this, when we put this back together. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of grease to right around here. Now these things that I'm adding grease to, you can certainly add oil. I prefer grease. We're here in Florida, uh, so there's a lot of salt water around us, and typically even reels that we use in fresh water kind of find their way into salt water to use sometimes. So. So that goes on first. We're gonna take this, I'm gonna drop it over like that, but I'm also gonna grease the outside of it. Just only to do the inside since the post was greased. Now we can get our bearing, which I have not oiled yet. I'm gonna oil that slightly, a couple drops. Kind of work that in. Now I'm gonna pop that off and I'm gonna grease that as well. And that's just kind of to help this not get frozen onto that post or become difficult to remove if I need to replace it. Sticking that on. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this line roller. Grease the insides as well. Even though what we have going inside there is a bushing, uh, I kind of like just to protect these things. Alright, let's take our bushing, we're gonna stick that on there. Sometimes I actually do grease that bushing as well. This time I'm not gonna do it. We want the thicker part, like I said, going on over it. Trust me, it only go on it only goes on one way. Uh, let me not say that before I see it. Uh, it might go on the other way as well. But it, the thicker part will go facing the bail wire, like that. We can take this plastic piece and drop that on the inside. And the last piece I'm gonna, I don't, let me not say last, <laughs> but I'm gonna say the last piece I'm gonna grease is this piece right here. Rest assured, I'm probably gonna grease more stuff. Stick that on there over this. Before you put this on, make sure that washer that we just put on there is recessed inside of the line roller. On like so. Now we can take our bail arm. And we can just stick it on there and rotate it until it drops in place, just kind of like that did. Let me go ahead and remove this so I can rotate this around. That should be right. Right about there. And it doesn't matter if it slides out on you or whatever, we're going to, um, we're going to reset it a couple times and that's fine. The goal here is just kind of work that down so it's secured. 
but not all the way. And the other way you can do is certainly just start screwing it in and then uh, figuring out where the slot is to lock that up, the bail arm I'm referring to, when you get closer to the bottom. Now, of course, once I get close to the bottom here, I'm going to stop screwing, rotate one more time to make sure that I'm in that slot, and we are still there, so we're good. I'm going to tighten that down a little bit, but I'm not going all the way down, like I said. So leave it a little loose where you have a little bit of play, but it's still locked in place. All right, now what we can work on would be the bail arm, I'm not sure, the bail spring side. Uh, I'm going to put grease around that hole. Don't need a lot of grease anywhere else, but I'm going to stick some inside there and across here as well. The grease I'm using here is the pan grease, but you can certainly use whatever grease works for you. Uh, where were we? So let's stick this in first. I'm going to leave that pin out for now. But I am going to add a little bit of grease on top of that spring so we have something to catch it when we put it in there. Where this sits is there's two little notches or two tabs on these. There's a larger tab and a thinner tab thinner tab. The larger tab will be the one facing down into the rotor. So it'll be looking with that piece facing down towards the bottom. So it'll be looking like that. Before we do that, we're going to stick our spring in. And you don't need to put any uh, any grease on this. You certainly can if you want to. I'm not going to. Drop this in place. Make sure that end is facing up, kind of like that. And that's how it's sitting. Now we take this piece and we're just going to stick it over there. Uh, that little hole in the middle right there will fit over this shorter tab. And this little round piece obviously will fit in that curved area right there. Uh, you might have to pop it in a little bit, kind of like that. But let's just snap into place and you should be fine. Now I'm going to put this in before I forget it. And hopefully I put enough grease in there that that will stay. But I'm going to keep an eye on it before I uh, cover everything up. Alright, so that's done. Now we're going to stick this piece in. I'll break this down so you guys can kind of see it. You have that little arm right there. The spring and then this holder. Sticking the spring back in and I'm sticking this back on top of this. Now the way this sits is just like that. Now what we do is we take this, it'll look like that when we're putting it in. And we're going to kind of work that in. I'm going to first start with the tab portion of it, rotate it as I push this in to get that uh, center hole over that piece right there. Kind of like so. Now that's set. We're going to take these two pieces, the silver piece first, drop that on, and then the plastic piece goes on after it. So it'll look just like that. Now we can cover it up. The shorter screw goes first, which will be on top. Then we have this one on the bottom. Uh, one thing I didn't tell you, which I think you guys may know, but just in case you don't, the uh, the screw that's going inside here is the, the tighter thread, so it's like a metal thread kind of screw going inside here. Same for this side over here. It's a metal thread uh, kind of screw as well. The other ones are more for like a wood or graphite sort of thing. So they have a larger, um, they have a larger uh, spacing between the threads. And this one's not going in. So did I do that wrong? Let's see here. I did, so I apologize for that. 
I'm gonna put this one on top, which is the longer, the longer screw on top, and the shorter one goes on the bottom. That's my fault. I apologize. But what you did notice there is that I didn't try to force that screw all the way in. Once I felt resistance, I realized maybe hey, there's something wrong here, and just switch them up. Don't force anything on these reels because uh, you risk breaking something. Uh, before we before we go any further, let me go ahead and show you this piece underneath here because we're going to grease that. There's a metal counterweight under here. There's also one in the side of the rotor, but we're just going to grease this one up. They're going to protect any salt from getting into it. And let's get back to the business. So I'm going to take this, attach this first before I try to work on putting these two pieces together. So I'm going to add a little bit of grease to the, either to the tip here, like that, or I could put it to the hole that that's going to be going into. That hole right there. This might take a little, uh, couple tries or so. Notice I'm sticking the, the the post in first before I'm trying to rotate this around. So essentially what I'm going to do here is I want to move that tab that you see right there down to the slot where it fits inside the housing. If it's too high up, it'll stay, it'll stay high on you and you won't be able to get this other piece in. But when I get it down there, I'm going to take my tweezers and then just kind of work that in. And what I'm doing here is I'm pushing down on this uh, bail arm as well, lightly, not, not too hard, until I find that slot. And I can see it, so that's always good. Right about there is where it should be. Right there. Just push down on it, and I did make sure that pin and spring were in before I did that because who wants to open this back up and put it together? This uh, thick threaded screw will be going in first. And you kind of want to work this screw back and forth to, until you find the the path of least resistance, but you don't want to you won't, you don't want to rethread this. If you do it uh, too aggressively or too poorly, you'll end up needing a new bail arm because it won't stay inside. All right, so that's set. Now all we're gonna do is take our plastic piece, the spacer right there. You can add some grease here, which I'm gonna do, but honestly, it doesn't really help that much. Rest that over it. I'm gonna take this post, stick it through, rotate it until those two slots uh, fit inside the inside the rotor. Kind of like that it has to be flush if it's not flush then you're resting too high so just rotate it until it drops in place and it looks like that i'm going to keep my finger back here i'm going to add some grease to this screw and again like i said rest your hand over here to support that post and then just kind of work it in same deal as over here you're kind of finding the path of least resistance because you don't want to rethread this this one's a little more difficult because it's metal, but it can still be done. Now the last thing to do would be to tighten this line roller screw down. And now we can move on to the body of the reel. I'm gonna clean this stuff up first. Uh, any residue you see over there is more like a paint spray or overspray. It is not dirt that's on the reel. But I don't want that stuff getting inside here. So before I open the reel up, I'm going to clean this stuff off. All right, so now we have, we have four screws here that we're going to remove. Uh, we're going to also have to remove, remove something on top before we get inside here. But we're going to start with these four screws first. These two on the left side should be, or my left, should be longer than the two right ones. So 
those two short ones there and two longer ones there. All right, so let's do un undo this anti reverse clutch. We're going to remove those four silver screws. Kind of pull straight up, just like so. We'll check that in a sec. Now there's a, a rubber rotor brake here that we have to take off. I'm going to use my small flathead screwdriver, kind of work in and out and up. Leave this part right here to last. That's the most difficult part to get off. So we're just going to kind of work that up around the post like that. And yeah, it may take a couple tries. Don't go too far up because you don't want to stretch this too much or risk breaking it. But you don't have to be as gentle as, as you may think with these things. This is actually a pretty good one, which is good. There we go. Comes out like that. Now we can take this side plate off. Or side cover, excuse me. That piece comes out. All right, there's a screw here we're going to remove to take the shaft out. That right there. Pull this out so we don't have to worry about that. That comes out. Drive gear is out. There's your block and your oscillation gear. Notice there's another bushing up here at the top. And I don't want to take this thing out or not. I don't like taking these things out. We're going to take this out so you guys can see everything in this reel. On this side, I think you have a bushing, not a bearing. You do have a bushing. Cool. And yes, there's a bearing here. All right, to get this out, we're going to undo this screw here. And in general, these are kind of get locked up or frozen sometimes, so it's not easy to get them out. But that's a good reason to actually take it out and do some preventative maintenance on it. So now I'm going to take my tweezers, rest it under there, and just pull up. This one's coming out really easy, which is nice. That's out. Here's the spring and the lever. And I think that's it. You have this uh, gold uh, bushing that's around the post uh, for the oscillation gear. And that's all we're going to do for this part. Let's just double check this clutch. Make sure everything is good. And it all looks good to me. All right, so I'm going to get cleaned up, come back to you and show you how to put all the stuff back in. Uh, before we go, uh, there's this piece here that I'm not going to take out. I took it out. I didn't mean to. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just a cover that goes inside there. Just goes up, goes down. That's it. All right. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to put in here is going to be this bushing. That's it. That's right there. A little bit of grease in there. A little bit of grease in this hole right here. A little bit around the post or that bushing, that gold bushing right there. Some on the edge and some right there. Do the top in a sec. Now, if you look here, you'll see that there's two little tabs on the bottom right there. Uh, those two little tabs will, will correspond to two receiving tabs or holes inside the housing. So we're going to kind of line that up as best we can and then just put it in the right slot. Hopefully, we get it right away. If we don't, then we have to rotate it. And there we go. All right, so now for this, we're going to put this in. Let's go ahead and grease it up a little bit. 
I don't really have a great way of putting this back in. Um, kind of try whatever works and then go from there. I didn't remove that little silver uh, bushing that's on top there. But note that there is one there. So if you don't have one, it has to go on. So find it and put it back on. All right, so I'm going to rest this in the hole right here. This is going to look kind of like this. Let's get this in. I'm going to drop that straight through looking like this. You want the uh, you want the larger hole facing like that. Now we're not going to put this in all the way. We're going to take that, turn this all the way to the left, lift this up slightly. My apologies. I thought I was recording and I wasn't. Then I went through this entire thing and you guys didn't see it. So back to this. <laughs> All right, so I've put the spring inside the, the hole in the body. I've lifted this piece up slightly away from the lever, but I want to kind of keep it in, in position there. And now I kind of have this at an angle, but I'm going to use my tweezers. And I don't, this, this is the best way I can do it. If one of you guys have, have a better way out there, I'd be happy to hear it. Now I'm going to use my tweezers to kind of just bend this over I'm gonna keep that rotated there bend this over and then push it into the uh, into that little slot that you see right right there and this again is not the necessarily the easiest way of doing it or easiest thing to do I mean that's the easiest way of doing it there might be a better way that I don't know of I'm going to kind of position it at an angle because that should help a little bit, but it's still difficult. All right, so I kind of got it in there. We're going to double check it to make sure that it's in, which I think it is. So now we're good. Now I'm going to take the screw and put that inside there. What I did was I added some grease to here. I'm going to do it again just to be on the safe side. Then secure it with this screw. Okay, so I think you saw me grease this part. If you didn't, I lightly greased that. Hopefully you saw me put the bushing in. I don't remember what I what I recorded what I didn't. Uh, added a light amount of grease inside here uh, where that bearing is going to go uh, it was this one I added some oil to this greased everything here and greased the threads as well I'm going to re-grease these threads just to make sure uh, and if I didn't show you guys this part I think I did but that bushing inside there has a little notch in the back of it make sure a notch goes over the post on the body of the reel when you look at it. Just drop this in. We're gonna take our anti-reverse clutch. There's two little posts on the bottom. They'll be going through those two corresponding holes right there, kind of like this. And that notch in the shaft, I'm sorry, in the um, metal piece right there, will be going over this. Uh, I think I did say earlier that there's a metal ring around the post on this. If you don't have it there, look for it, find it, and put it back on before you put this on. Just kind of feel around for it. We're locked in place, and I'm just going to screw this in. And you're not going to snug these down, or you're going to snug them down, but not too much. The goal here is to just secure it, but not over tighten. Now I took the oscillation gear, dropped it on, had it in a position somewhere like there, took the block, dropped it over it. And I kind of want to work that all the way down to the bottom. It has to be really close to the bottom because of the screw you're putting in here. I'll put that in a sec. Now we'll take the main gear or the drive gear 
And you can see the kind of greasing that I did on it. Drop that in place, like so. We can now take this shaft, which I greased the part that's gonna go inside the block. It'll be facing up, looking like that with the flat part facing up. Secure it with the screw. And now we can take this piece. Notice there's a little tab on one end and it's kind of curved on this end. The curve then will be going around that lever and the one tab or one post will be going inside the other side. Just want to make sure it's level, which this one is not. Don't know what I did there. Uh, there we go. That looks good. Now we can take this, kind of wrap it around. The first part I want to try to get to would be the um, would be this part that's kind of loose, but you can go anywhere you want. You just go, you kind of want to just get it started though. And I leave that for last. So I get that down there like that. And then we just kind of play with it to work it in where you put that in at an angle. I'm sorry, at a, you angle it to get it straight down is what you're trying to do. And we are there. Good. Now that's all good. Let's go ahead and stick this in. Kind of rotate it until you find a drop in place. Then when you get there, you can just simply pinch, rotate as you push down on that metal inner, uh, inner race. Now we can take our spacer and our shim, put that on there. And I'm gonna test this out to see how it feels. And I oil this one as well. I'm gonna add a little more oil to it just so you guys can see me do it. And I'm gonna kind of play with this right now to see how it feels. I'm pinching on pretty hard just to see that feels pretty good. I think it should be fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and secure it. Yep, still feels good. Okay, so now we're gonna take the rotor and stick that on top. I'm gonna add some grease to the bottom of it. And up here. Drop that over and then secure it with the screw or with the nut, excuse me. And I'm going to do one more test when I snug this down to make sure that that rotation is fine. Yeah, that feels good. All right, so the last thing we're gonna do here is clean this up a little bit and, and grease certain places and oil certain places. So we're going to go ahead and grease inside here. With a generous amount of grease. And here as well, where it's going to go inside that main gear or that driver gear. And here we're gonna add some oil to it. Some through this hole right here. 
and some right there. And just kind of work it in. That feels good. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and attach this set screw to the uh, to the nut part right around here somewhere. That should be good. like that. So let's go ahead and stick this inside. Test this out a little bit. Make sure everything's working fine. I'm not going to test the drags. I'm just going to test the uh, enter reverse, the bail flip, all that other good stuff. But not, not the spool. Feels nice. Feels really nice. Bail flip works nicely. Enter reverse works. Enter reverse lever off or disengage works as well. That's good. All right, that's it. Guys, if you found the video useful, please hit that thumbs up button. If you appreciate content like this, uh, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on your notification bell. And uh, that's it. Thank you all for, again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ugh, oh, nasty. Nasty boys. Uh, uh.